smile to your face. I don't know what will. I'd like to call this meeting. Uh, actually, I'd like to convene into out of our um, work session into our regular session. And I will ask Angie Wade to call roll on this meeting of the Inner City Commission Tuesday, April the 18th. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Collins. Here. Commissioner Pruitt. Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner Rayburn. Here. Commissioner Watson. Here. Commissioner Honda. Here. Mayor, you have form. Thank you very much. If you could all stand, please. And David Anthony, would you mind coming up and doing our invocation for us? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to serve the great citizens of Venice. Lord, I thank you for this, um, these elected officials. Lord, I pray that you would be over everything that is said tonight and done in your honor, Lord. I just ask that you'd forgive us for all our sins. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, God one and indivisible. All righty, we are going to move right into presentations. Marty? All right, yes, Mayor. So we have a new uh, member of our team that was not here the last time we had his slide up, so we're going to introduce James Wallings for tonight. James is joining our water department as a public works inspector. James was absent previously, but we wanted to make sure we acknowledged him and his extensive uh, maintenance manager experience that he's bringing to our city. He was a construction inspector mechanic for the city of Irving for 14 years, a systems technician with the city of Frisco for three years, a water CSI supervisor. Is that crime scene investigator? Or Okay. <laughs> for the city of Bedford for three years, utility line maintenance manager, city of Louisville for eight, financial management technical assistant, Texas Rural Water Association. James is also a four-year U.S. Navy veteran, honorably discharged with Battle E Honors and Good Conduct Medal. He lives in Perdone with his wife and three children. He loves working close to home and doing a job he enjoys. His hobbies are fishing and gardening, and although he has only been with us a very short time, he is already making a difference out there inspecting the uh, great quantities of utility work we have going on around the city. So, James, welcome to our city. We appreciate having you. <laughs> and next up, Irene, our Human Resources Director, will tell you a little bit about an award that the city has received. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm excited to announce to you the recognition that we received from the American Heart Association. And I wanted to share with you and also to thank you for the support. It wouldn't be possible without your support and the city manager's support for us to achieve this recognition. So the city of Venice is proud to let you know that we've met the criteria for gold level recognition in the American Heart Association's Workforce Wellbeing Scorecard, and I'll explain what that means shortly. Last month, we received this letter from the CEO of the American Heart Association, and real quick, it just uh, says congratulations and being honored for the American Heart Association's level of recognition for your 2022 Workforce Wellbeing Scorecard Assessment. Your commitment to the well-being and success of your company and its employees is highly commendable. As a global force for healthier lives for nearly a century, the American Heart Association is here to employ, is here to help employees like the city of Ennis protect your greatest asset, which is your employees. Your efforts to reduce stress and burnout, address health inequities, and support organizational well-being are vital to building a healthier workforce. I encourage you to share your workforce well-being scorecard gold level achievement and use this assessment regularly as part of a comprehensive health and well-being strategy. Um, so this is really, we're proud to share this with you. It was from Nancy Brown, who is the current CEO of the American Heart Association. So the next slide shows the plaque that we received, and this is going to be framed and put on our um, HR walls. 
as soon as Stephen and his team vacate the space, we can use that wall. Um, and just to give you a little background about what this is, what the Workforce Wellbeing Scorecard is, the American Heart Association has defined best practices for employers to use to build a culture of health and well-being for their employees in the workforce. <laughs> The Workforce Wellbeing Scorecard is the questionnaire that is used to gauge the extent to which the employer has implemented those uh, workplace best practices. The scorecard is comprised of 93 best practice questions with a maximum attainable score of 230 points. Now the labels, levels listed there, platinum, gold, silver, and bronze, are the ones that you can attain, and we made gold, um, but we're gonna aim higher. Now that is an index score, so not all the questions have the same weight. And the recognition level that we received, the gold standard, uh, we scored 192 points out of the possible 230 points. And this is 10% higher than all the other companies uh, that scored, the average was 174. So you can see that we really do well, or we did well. A total of 386 uh, organizations participated, and that includes 25 cities. We are one of those 25 cities. The highest score was uh, the platinum was attained by only 35 companies, and only one city uh, made that score. And of course, I looked them up to see what they did to get there, and that one city was Highland Village. Um, what they did is just two things that we, are, um, Marty and I are working on to attain next year, and I'll cover those shortly. The number of companies that got the gold level of recognition was 151, and only 12 cities made that recognition. So to get the platinum recognition, we have to increase the mental health awareness programs that we have. Currently, we're focusing on physical health, which we're really doing very well, but we have to step it up a notch by also considering the mental health of our employees. And then another requirement was becoming a mother-friendly work site. And this is doing things like having a lactation room when we hire uh, mothers, working mothers, who are maybe um, in their first year after their pregnancies. They need a lactation room. And for a long time, we did not have that. But with your support and approval, we did get that. And Mari has uh, worked with me to help put that in place. And just to let you know that we do use that because we have three employees currently who would make use of something like that. So thank you for your support with that. Regarding the uh, comparison with the other cities, with the 385 uh, companies, the chart that you see shows how we compare with them. And as you can see, we are, in, we are the blue um, bars, and the other 386 companies are in yellow. But you can see that we, we do much better than all the other companies combined. The one area where I see there's room for improvement, um, although there's room for improvement in all areas, because we don't make 100% except for a few of the areas, but the one area that stands out is reporting outcomes, and that just means that when we do gauge our experiences, we do need to go back and show how we compared with the other companies, how we're doing, and currently we're not tracking that. We have the data, but we're not really tracking that. So that's going to be one of my goals for the next year. Now, what are the benefits of doing something like this? I just pulled out just a few. Uh, the first one is valuing our employees is one of the guiding principles uh, that's going to be in our strategic plan that uh, I think Stephen will present sometime. But the way we value of our employees is by investing in their wellness. And this being a requirement of the Workforce Wellbeing Scorecard, this shows our support and how we help our employees thrive. Another one is uh, participation requires regular evaluation of the wellness plan. So by doing, by evaluating the plan, we, we, we identify gaps. And when we do identify these gaps, we have to go in and create some strategic solutions, which again, help our employees and help us as well. And then um, by knowing how we compare or how we stack up to peer organizations, this is a good hiring tool, and many of the new employees that we've hired are very interested in this, and they show that because you're doing that, I want to work with the city of Innes. So it's not only a good hiring tool, but it's also a good retention incentive. Um, we talk to our existing employees and show them the benefit of being well and healthy, 
and uh, they know that we care about them because of the different things that we do with our wellness plan. And then lastly, the scorecard process addresses areas that are critical to remaining competitive as an employer, uh, like having mental health policies and employee awareness, having organizational well-being strategies that address employee burnout, and we all know after COVID this is really, really important, just paying attention to how employees are working so hard and getting burnt out. And then having strategies that promote health equity in the workforce is also important. Supporting employees' financial health as a key element of well-being. This is one area we're going to step up. We focus on the physical, but we don't so much focus on financial well-being, but this is something that we want to increase. And then uh, the last one is promoting and supporting volunteerism and community partnership. Uh, good uh, low-hanging fruit is the the downtown events that we have, increasing our employees and senior staff to participate is one of the ways that uh, will help us. And so that's all I have, but again, I'm proud to, uh, to have shared that with you. If anybody has questions, I'll be happy to answer them. No, I just, no, I speak as far as from all the commission, congratulations, and we Thank are so you. proud of you and so proud of all of our employees. Um, we'll get platinum, I have no doubt. Yes. <laughs> And thank you for everything that you do, Irene. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Irene. Thank you. And now Becky is going to come forward and take us through a few slides. We wanted to show you just a couple of the recent events that have been going on in Ennis. Some, but probably not all. But we'll start with this crazy egg hunt. Yeah, on April 8th, uh, Foundation of Life um, hosted an egg hunt out at Rotary Park. and. Um, I understand it was, I was, did not get to be there, but I understand it was covered uh, with kids and uh, it was a great time held by, had, had by all. Um, who else was out there? Rotary was out Rotary. there volunteering. There was PD and fire and um, yeah, they had a great time. It was a very successful event. A Foundation of Life has been doing it out at um, the soccer fields, and this year uh, they moved because of another event. They moved it to Rotary Park, and I think they really enjoyed it there. I have never seen that many people in <laughs> Rotary Park ever. It was wonderful. Right. Little update on Blue Bonnet Trails. Yeah, so uh, Blue Bonnet Trails officially cooked, uh, kicked off on April 1st, <laughs> and it has been phenomenal. I mean, I think you might have seen one of the fun things that I think that. Um, Mar uh, Liz and um, Ashley have done in, in capturing all of the people that have been visiting from all over the world. Um, our blue bonnets this year, or the wildflowers in our area, are truly spectacular. Um, it's probably one of the better years I've ever seen. Um, and according to the Garden Club and uh, some others who have been tracking them, they agree. So we've uh, had that, we've already at this point surpassed. Um, the number of visitors we had last year, and we still have two weeks left to go. Wow. So we're really, really proud of all of that. And Blue Bonnet Market is off to a strong it start. It is, it is. And so that same day that we were, that the Foundation of Life was hosting the egg hunt out at Rotary Park, we had Easter Jam uh, downtown, and it was a huge success. We had uh, tons of people, obviously visitors from all over, that also got to um, experience um, our uh, great downtown and um, we're really excited. This weekend is Earth Day. We'll be making blue bonnet seed bombs if anybody wants to come down. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've got the next three, the next three slides are your maps. Okay. And so something we've wanted to do for many years and you did it this year. That's right. We so, posted. So brag about this. <laughs> yeah, we posted these maps and uh, we asked our visitors to go and put their dot where they were from. Um, and so this is kind of a representation of it this last, uh, did you take a picture this last weekend? I did. Yeah, so this last weekend, I'm shooting to get every county um, on here, and I'm, I've still got the rest of this month to, ma to, ma uh, to manifest that. <laughs> well, you've got most of them. That's right, that's right. And then, of course, this is the, uh, our, uh, every state, I believe, except Vermont. Um, yeah, I believe every one of them except Vermont. And then the world uh, is just incredible. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that something? Oh, that's amazing. I know. Look at the dots. I know. So anytime I mean, they come in, especially if they talk funny, I tell them. Literally. Um, I know you're not from around here. You need to go put your dot on my wall. <laughs> uh, so.
So it was, it's been a very, um, it just fills me with so much pride. I, and I'm so grateful to the city staff who volunteered over the weekend. I hope that they also got that sense of pride of all these people that are coming to see our town. Um, it just, I just, it's never ending. It's just incredible. That's amazing. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> awesome. All right. And so, Stephen, I think people have clapped after every presentation. <laughs> no pressure. And so, you know, there's no pressure as you present the budget calendar. Very exciting. <laughs> so, Mayor and City Commission, the FY 2024 budget process has already started. Um, the Finance Department has already prepared preliminary revenue estimates for next fiscal year. We have already prepared the budget for the salary and benefit projections for next fiscal year at all. Also, this coming Thursday, the city will have a budget kickoff event. And during this budget kickoff, the departments will be provided financial overview and projections of the, of the city as well as given detailed instructions on how to prepare their, their budget request. Those budget requests are gonna be due back to finance on May 3rd. And then on May 10th through the 24th, the city manager and the budget review committee will review the department of budget request and will also finalize a city manager proposed budget that would then be presented to you at the City Commission Budget Retreat on June 30th. The certified tax rolls are due from the county on, on July 25th. Once we receive that information, we will have a meeting on August 1st, and during that meeting, we're gonna discuss those tax rolls, and the City Commission will also vote on the proposed property tax rate. August 15th, we're gonna have a budget hearing. And then on September 5th, this is a big day where the city commission will vote on the budget. We will have a hearing on the property tax rate. And we, as a city commission, you will also vote on the, on the property tax rate in the same meeting. So, Thank you, Stephen. Right. Should we clap? Okay. Yeah. We appreciate your work, Stephen. Thank you for getting that. Next, we have public comment period. The City Commission invites citizens to address the Commission on any topic not already scheduled for public hearing. Citizens wishing to speak should complete a citizen's comment period form and present it to the City Secretary prior to the meeting. Speakers are limited to three minutes. In accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, the City Commission cannot take action on items not listed on the agenda. However, your concerns may be addressed by City staff placed on a future agenda or responded to by some other course. At this time, I will open the citizens' public comment period. With no one wishing to speak, I will close the citizens' public comment period and move on to commissioner updates. I bet we've got a lot to talk about. I do. Okay, let's go, Mr. Hansa, you started. Uh, I, I really don't. Just, just to reiterate what Becky was talking about, I literally was downtown the entire time of the Blue Bonnet Trails Festival, and you touched on the two words, you stole my thunder, pride and gratitude. Those are the two things that came to mind whenever I was downtown. Ten years ago, we dealt with a situation where we were at a crossroads on what are we going to do? We just had a tornado that goes through downtown, and we have to make some decisions on what we want to do to continue to make downtown and the city and keep it and make it better on the map of the map that you just showed. I volunteered at the Wine Wander and the same thing. We had a lot of people from Ennis, but a vast majority of the people that we had weren't even from Ellis County. I mean, they were from North Texas. We had people from England, Sweden, Australia, Venezuela, Mexico, Canada, Japan, because we asked them. And it was truly incredible to see all of those people that came to our little neck of the woods here to enjoy 
the blue bonnets and to enjoy downtown. And literally from one end of town to the other, I saw nothing but happy people. I saw nothing but happy families. I saw nothing but happy pets. It really <laughs> was an enjoyable and incredible um, weekend. And I just can't thank the city and all the people that go to put that event on. There's so many people that think, oh, well, these events just happen and whatnot. And there is so many man hours that are put forth in making these events special. And really, we're to a point now where we're really, it's like we, we you know, we think of all the details. We think of all the fine things that are really bringing people here and realizing what we've known for a long time, and that is, this is a great place to be. It's a great place. It's a great it's place awesome. to live. It's awesome. And right. people are, they're, they're drinking the Kool-Aid from us. And it's not a show. It's real. And I just enjoyed the weekend. I was tired, and I know you were too. <laughs> but um, I just, I had an immense amount of pride and an immense amount of gratitude at the end of the weekend, knowing that this is where I grew up. This is where my parents raised our family. And I just, I just couldn't be more pleased. And I just commend all of the city employees and all of the volunteers that made it happen because it's no accident. It takes a huge amount of work. And you guys just did one hell of a job. So I want to give you my own clap. Anybody else want to say anything? I do want to, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jane. I was going to say congratulations to the fire department. Uh, they had a, a fundraiser. Um, at the Blue Bonnet Festival by selling crawfish. I understand they sold out of a thousand pounds. And I know that because I went there Sunday to get me a plate and, and <laughs> Josh Slovak told me, hey, we're out. Sorry, sorry. So, <laughs> congratulations to you guys. I know you're raising money to restore the, the vintage fire truck, so congratulations. <coughs> Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I did want to mention also um, uh, the garden Ennis Garden Club for the Blue Bonnet Festival um, as the ones that started it here and I think we owe them all our gratitude and uh, when you plant a seed and you plant a Blue Bonnet seed mm -hmm. you better watch it because it's going to grow. And was this 70? 70? 71st. 71st. 71st so yeah. that's mm -hmm. exciting. Anybody wow. else? Good stuff. It's great stuff and we appreciate every one of you and everything going on. All right, um, next let's move on to consent items. Item E1, approval of the minutes for the April 4th, 2023 in the City Commission briefing and regular session meetings. I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that the uh, um, briefing at the meeting room is, is approved. Second. I second the approval of item E1. I have a, a motion by Commissioner Watson and actually Commissioner Jones made the second. All okay, those in sorry. favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? Thank you. Next, items for discussion and individual consideration. Item F1, discuss and consider an ordinance amending the Code of Ordinances Chapter 2, Article 3, Division 2, Airport Advisory Board. Section 2-61, created composition appointment terms of office by removing the residency requirement for board members and by removing Section 2-64, conflicts of interest in its entirety. Uh, this is no different than we discussed in workshop. It is very simply removing the residency requirement to be a member of the board and also removes the conflicts of interest clause in the section cited in the uh, caption on the item. Staff recommends approval. Thank you. Any discussion? Marty, uh, just for those who may not be with us here today, uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on that second item about why we're remo removing the conflict of interest portion of the ordinance? Yeah, so the airport, thank you, Commissioner. The airport advisory board um, advises the city commission on things that affect the airport. Um, and we're getting ready to, um, we've approved an airport master plan and we have not had an active airport board uh, for maybe as long as I can remember. And so we're going through the process of reconstituting that board. And, and way back when the bylaws of this board were created, there was a conflicts of interest um, section and kind of clause in there to prevent anyone from getting on the board and basically using the board to their financial advantage. 
And so the, what's happened over the years, though, is that the people that you want on an airport <coughs> advisory board are people that have an interest in your airport. And so pilots that, the way the clause was currently written, a pilot that, that parked their airplane at our airport could be argued that, well, you've got a financial interest, so you can't serve as an advisory member of this board. And so what this allows is it removes that clause so that stakeholders that have an interest in our airport can serve on that airport board and advise the city commission to take actions that they might seem necessary to help us grow and develop our municipal airport. Marty, also, they don't have legislative power as well, so that's this is the number one reason as well. Yes, Mayor. It's strictly an advisory board, so they don't have the they don't have the authority to spend money, appropriate money, or do anything like that. So all of their actions come back to the city commission, and all of that authority uh, resides with the city commissioner. So there's really no opportunity for anyone to use that position for their financial gain. Am, am I saying that in a way that makes yes, sense? I yes, I think so. Okay, any other questions? If not, I will entertain a motion on item F1. I'll make the motion to approve item F1 as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Holland and a second by Commissioner Hansa to approve item F1 as presented. Is there any further discussion? If not, I'll take your vote. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? The motion carries. Item F2, oh, item F2, discuss and consider making appointments to the airport advisory board. And this is your slate of candidates that we discussed. We've separated them into group one and group two. Staff recommends approval of these seven candidates to the airport advisory board. And with, yes. With the terms. Terms. With terms. Numbers yes. one, two, and three would be appointed for a two-year term expiring May 15th, 2025. Numbers four, five, six, and seven will be appointed for a term expiring May 15th, 2024. Right. With the ability as all to, <coughs> to reappoint, reappoint, et cetera, just yes. to right. make that's, it clear. That's to meet the criteria in the bylaws. Does anyone on the commission have any questions? Well, staff would recommend as stated, approval as stated. Sir, um, Secretary Wade, did you say at the end of the year or was there a specific month May you said? 15th. May. May. May okay. 15th. Okay. Any other questions, discussion? I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve item F2 as presented. Okay. Second motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Hansa and a second by Commissioner Watson to approve item F2 as presented. Again, no further discussion. I'll take your vote. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, the motion will carry. Item F3, discuss and consider approval of a resolution adopting a city of Ennis. Oh, you know what? Item F3, we are going to pull. We're going to take no action on that, we're, actually. We're going to I'm recommend sorry. no action on no this action item on while we one. do some final editing to the strategic plan. Thank you, Marty. Item F4, discuss and consider approval of a street closure special event permit for a car and bike show. This is uh, requested by the backyard. Um, they want to do a show here right where the uh, new food court is on Saturday, May 7th. It is not gated, no alcoholic beverages, and they're not going to prohibit the carry of firearms. You can see on the exhibit Ennis Avenue on the north, Brown Street on the south, and then the yellow shaded area is West Main. This is the area that would be closed off for this event. And staff recommends approval of this item. Any questions? Any discussion? Mm -hmm. If not, I will entertain a motion on item F4. Motion five. to approve item F4. I'm, I'm sorry. Five. Okay, it says item F5. F F I'm F sorry, on ours Wait, it says F4. 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 I'm sorry, I had. I've motion to approve item F4 as presented. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Hansa and a second by Commissioner Jones to approve item F4 as presented. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed, the motion will carry. Thank now we're you. on to F5. Item F5, discuss and consider approval of a street closure special event permit for the Rotary Club's Polka Fest run. All right, this is requested by the Rotary Club for Saturday, May 7th from 5.30 in the morning till 10 
in the morning. It is not a gated event. No alcoholic beverages will be sold and firearms will not be prohibited and there are various rolling closures for this um, and you can see that on the map. 10K, 5K and I think a one mile fun walk. Yellow, green and blue as indicated on the map. And staff recommends approval of this item. All right, I'll entertain a motion on item F5. Move that we approve item F5 as presented. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Holland and a second by Commissioner Hansa. Any further discussion? Just want to uh, uh, make the observation a portion of this street closure goes through a private street, so just uh, Rotary will need to make sure that they coordinate with, the, um, with that HOA um, to be able to access that private gated community. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. You've got one. We have oh, I'm sorry. How about we vote? We vote. vote. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your right hand. All those opposed? The motion will carry. And with that, we are adjourned. At 704, thank you all for a wonderful meeting. Um, enjoy the blue bonnets, enjoy one another. Two more weeks of blue bonnet trails. Yeah.